I'm counting on you. Uh, I'm counting on you, Danielle, to make sure you make us all sound great now. Good. Don't let me. <laughs> we need to do an organized launch of the Kate Upton memes. Did you see the newest one that Kyle made with the Hitler mustache? Yes, I did. I saw that. She'll love that. And that's like, <laughs> you, you ought to send it to like to Fred Upton uh, uh, colleagues at the, at the house. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, I, I may have to turn you in to Fred Upton, the U.S. representative. <laughs> maybe look, I, I said maybe I can score some points with him if I turn you in. <laughs> I found out. I found out Grandpa Upton's still alive. This one might do him in. This uh, uh, Fred Upton, he, he's a character. I hear the music playing, so welcome to November 21st, 2014's United Front Radio. This is Daniela Walls, National Chair of the Tax Wall Street Party, and Kyle McCarthy, founding member of the United Front Against Austerity. Tonight we are joined by Reverend Edward Pinckney, who is leading the decisive battle of our time for civil and economic rights in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Tonight's show is intended for activists already interested in helping Reverend Pinckney. We are going to pursue the relevant details, context, and action items you need to know so you can help secure Reverend Pinckney's freedom and make Benton Harbor a victory against austerity in America. If people do need a basic introduction to your case, or if they can contribute a donation to your legal defense, where would you want to send them? They go to bhbanco.org. That's B-H-B-A-N-C-O dot org. They can learn about the case just by going to uh, my blog, also, there's a PayPal there. Right now, we are very much in need of funds to continue this battle. So looking for a pro bono lawyer. Absolutely. So if anybody's out there and has access to a pro bono lawyer, tonight's information is going to help. So in tonight's episode, we're going to presume your innocence, Reverend. And this is going to serve as a how-to for activists around the country and the world to take action on behalf of you right now. We know the basic outline, like we said, and now we need to go into detail step by step. Tonight, let's imagine that we are sitting down as new activists in this case, and we want to start helping now. We're going to pretend that we're actually doing it. One of the first things that you need is letters to the judge. Oh, absolutely. We we need people to uh, start sending letters to this judge, Sterling Chirac, S-C-H-R-O-C-K. First name is Sterling, S-T-E-R-L-I-N-G. Uh, the address is 811 Port, P-O-R-T Street, St. Joseph, Michigan, 49085. And here's what I want them to say. How is it possible to convict a man with absolutely no evidence? Two, how was it possible a community with 96% African American not have one person from the community or from the surrounding town, Benton Township. How is it possible? How was it possible to have an all-white jury? Okay, so we want to make and, sure that people are not asking for leniency in these letters. Right, That absolutely. implies that you're guilty. Right. What we, we want to say is how can you convict somebody with no evidence? No evidence. That's the key word, and that, that should be our message loud and clear. So they can understand that everybody around this state and around the world know that there was absolutely no evidence. And for me to say this, and for you to write a letter to the judge to say this, you know that it almost has to be the truth. With no if, ands, and buts about it. We have a website that we're putting together with instructions called freepinkney.wordpress.com. On this website, we're going to show how to stylize the letter to the judge. When you're writing to a judge, the beginning, you put your address, then underneath that line, you put the date, and then you write address of the Honorable Sterling Schrock, mm-hmm. then judge of the local court of, and that would be, what is the court of? Benton Harbor, Michigan? No, no. It's of uh, Barron County, Michigan. Can you spell that? B-E-R-R-I-E-N. Okay, Barron County, Michigan, and then the address, and then you say... You know, I, I'm, I'm glad you said that part. They took an oath, and I want to read this oath, and I want people to put that, this oath in there that they took. Here, here, here's what I, I, I... We're going to start it off this way. Well, here, here, here's what I, I think we should say. Sterling Chirac, you took an oath, and you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States 
and will faithfully discharge the duty of the office of judge of the district court, district five, or to, according to the best of your ability. And then you could say, how is it possible for a man to be convicted of a crime with absolutely no evidence? Where does the constitution say this? But I want you to do it the way you want to do, but I want to make sure you have his oath in there. So that way we're going to hold him accountable for his oath. Exactly. So uh, do, do you need to write this down or something or, or you I, already know? I, how I've got that because we're recording. So I'm going to yeah. transcribe because you are the repository, uh, Reverend, of all this information. So we're mm -hmm. going to like this step by step, ask you, and then I'm going to transcribe it and put it onto the free <laughs> site so everybody can see the way the letter is stylized, the way it's yes. production. The way it's signed, the way you sign, mm -hmm. so you sign it sincerely, your first and last name, and your phone number. I'm going to put it all up on Free Pinkney, and it will say sample letter to the judge. And then you put your own emotional twist on it or how you guys want to reach out. But make sure you get the oath in there and no evidence. How can you You're right a man with no evidence? Absolutely. And that's where we, we should be if we continue at, at, at this pace. I, I think, we, you know, so far, Daniel, you're doing a tremendous job. And it's, it's important that people know you you may have uh, uh, had some questions that you needed to ask me. I'm going to go. Th I'll go through all those questions uh, one at a time. So okay. what type of mail? These are some of the questions I've gotten from activists in the field. I've boiled the list of their questions, Reverend. So what type of mail do we need to do? Certified mail? They ask, should we request a return receipt? In other words, proof. No, you, I would suggest they just send it regular mail. He'll, he'll get it because his name is on it and he will get it. Here's what I want you to do. Send one to him, then come back and send one to me. Make sure I, I get a copy myself. Okay, and this literally means you photocopy what you've handwritten or typed and signed, and uh -huh. then you photocopy that and you send the photocopy to the reverend. Yes. At your home address which we will right. post on freepinkney.wordpress.com. So we do not need it to be as if it's served via certified mail. Right. Oh. Reverend, can you walk us through how does the sentencing hearing work? Has the judge already made up his mind before you even walk into the courtroom, or is there some room within that hearing? Oh, there, there's, there's a lot of room. We really don't know at this stage what is actually going to take place that's why the letters are important Okay. to show that people around the country know exactly what is going on. And that's why I want to emphasize his oath. And there was absolutely no uh, no evidence to support a, uh, a conviction on any level. And I think that once we, we pound it into his head, then he's going to have to make a decision on what needs to be done. What is the best case scenario? Can he, even though the jury did convict is he able to just throw the case out on the basis that oh absolutely it, okay absolutely and uh, uh demand that there be a new trial mm -hmm. that can, that can easily happen what i'm looking at more than anything else i like i said i got i, I got something and i do want to do some of the things that you need to know since you you're such a big part of this and i think that we need to uh, uh just keep pounding away the more we pound away, the better things will be for, for me. So we have activists now deployed to try to find you a pro bono civil rights lawyer. And the right. most valuable player on this team is going to be the one that comes forward and says, I found the lawyer. The, Absolutely. Que the questions some of the lawyers are asking are these. First one is this. Why is the Democratic Party, especially Con Congressman Conyers, not helping you? And if not, Why? And is he helping? We have a couple of activists in Washington, D.C. who are going to go to his office on the Hill. I believe the answer to be is that you are much more radical than they are. The Democrats have not decided to fight Governor Schneider as a fascist. Right. Do you have a personal answer as to why Conyers oh, uh, well, uh, give us more in-depth information? Yes, I do. Uh, I've been knowing Conyers for a very, very long time. He liked me. Mm-hmm. Uh, just recently, he sent a hundred dollar donation. Mm -hmm. But Cynthia McKinney, you know who Cynthia McKinney is? Yes, we do. She called him up at his home, uh, requesting that he do a fundraiser for me. He agreed to do it, but his staff, I believe, stopped it. Kanye himself, if you talk directly to him, 
he will help. Our job is to get directly to Conyers. Right. If you can get somebody who can get directly to him and talk to him and make him do it right then, don't let him. Make sure he do it. You stay there and get the letter. But once you leave, his staff is going to take over and make everything else none and void. So what we have to do, whoever get in contact with him, they are to sit with him and he go to his staff and have them to write the letter and make sure he tells them to write the letter. Because if they don't, once you leave there, it's all over. You see? Okay. So he do, now here's the thing. He do like me. The problem is, is his staff. Okay. They call themselves protecting him. The activists, uh, when they speak to journalists and the lawyers, need more detail about your two earlier convictions. One, supposedly buying votes, and the other is threatening a judge with a verse from the Bible. So let's start with the first conviction. We need more details. What were you convicted of exactly in the first sen- sentencing? Let's include some legal terminology. Is Was your sentence vote buying? Uh, what they did was this. We, we did a recall election to stop this Harvard Shores project. And once again, we were successful. What was the Harvard Shores it, project? It's, it, it's, the, uh, it's a half a billion dollar project where they, they built the Jack Nicholas signature golf course. And they needed six votes in order to get it. And they had six commissioners under their belt. So we went after the, the honcho, the big honcho, the one who was in control of them. We were successful at recalling him. Once again, we always be successful. Uh, we did it through the absentee ballot. We got everybody who was who was wanted to vote, who couldn't get out to vote. Everybody who was going to be out of town made sure they voted and had these people to vote absentee. Here's what happened. After we won the election, they sent Glenn Yarborough, who was the commissioner who was recalled, to go out. They told him he had to find somebody to say that I had paid them $5 to vote. He paid this one guy, Martel Williams, $10 to say that I paid him $5. <laughs> it, it, it sounds funny, but it was unfortunately, it was true. Then they had four people. One girl, a girl, a group of girls, they did a drive-by shooting. And they was looking at life in prison. It just so happened that her and her sister voted absentee. And they said, she, this is what she said. She said, I put the stamp on the absentee ballot. You are not supposed to touch an absentee ballot, which I did not. But she said I did it. And in this case, they would find, they would say that you did. So they have four people to say that I touched the absentee. Not that I changed the date on it. Not that I changed the vote on it. That I touched the absentee ballot. And they charged me with that. Basically, like I said, it's documented all of this. It's not, you know, uh, the first trial, I had two trials. One of them ended in a hung jury. So nobody would believe nothing like that. I mean, if you saw the witnesses, it's almost ridiculous. And the second trial, another all-white jury found me guilty. I was given probation, four felony charges and a misdemeanor. Then what I did, I wrote an article in the People's Tribune, a newspaper, uh, quoting Deuteronomy 28, starting with the 15th verse. It simply said, if you do not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and do all these things which is right, all these things will come upon you. This judge, who was part of the Harbor Shores project, he was the realtor who was building these condominiums around the golf course, mm-hmm. said that it was a threat on his life, his wife's life, his children's life, and his children's children's life. The Bible scripture, Deuteronomy 28, starting with the 15th verse, which made no sense at all. So here in Barron County, they can find you guilty. They can find a sandwich guilty if they want to. Right. So that's basically how everything was. Once again, they came after me, knowing how much money I had. You see, Mm -hmm. I didn't get any donations during that period of time. It, what it did, it exhausted my savings. Right, which was basically no money at that time. Right. Okay. And that's, and that's what, it, what happened. Those, those are in reference to the convictions itself. Those, those are the answers that I would give. Okay. And it's online. You can look it up. They pretty much tell you the same story. 
And the thing that stands out in all this, and it was shocking so far for most of the lawyers, is this idea of an all-white jury, a white judge, and white prosecutors in an area that's 96% black. Absolutely. It doesn't make any sense to anybody. It doesn't make sense to me either. But see, this is this is a real war that we fight. This is no conflict. And and that's what we have to understand, that this is just what this is. And I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. That way you can relay that message to other people so they can understand exactly what it is. Nobody can go to prison for quoting the Bible. Right. I did. You did. You served a prison sentence, didn't you? Seven months in the county jail, four months inside the prison system. Uh, the ACLU got me out on appeal bond after I had been in jail a combination of 11 months. And then they had it overturned, you see. So there's a pattern here. Good. Th- I think a good place for an activist to start, I know it was helpful for, for me, is to get a la- look at the lay of the land. Meaning yeah. St. Joseph is like the seashore. Right. It, a first good thing is to take out a map. Like, in other words, Lake Michigan, and I didn't understand this because I'm not from that area, but Lake Michigan is big and it looks like Jones Beach or the Hamptons. It looks like the Atlantic coast. And they call mm-hmm. it the Riviera of the Midwest. And the yes. idea is that these rich guys like this area because the beach is so nice and the wind comes off the water. And they built this high end Jack Nicholas signature golf course. And Benton Harbor, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, is a little bit inland. Repeat that again. Ben- Benton Harbor, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, are you a little bit inland from S- St. Joseph where these rich guys live? We have all the water. We're the one, Benton Harbor is surrounded by the water. Okay. And on the other side, uh, uh, we own all, well, we, I should say we own. When they consider the portion of the lake, they consider it to be Benton Harbor. You I see. St. Joe, they do have a beach, but it's not like the Benton Harbor beach with the white sands and the dunes. It's a, a, a beautiful picture. Also, they put the six, seven, and eight hole of the Jack Nicholas signature golf course inside our beach. And that's what makes it so unique. I see. And that's what they wanted. And here's another thing they did. They built these million dollars, multi-million dollar home on the beach. And that's what one of the reasons I was fighting so hard to keep them from taking over the beach completely. And have they now taken over the beach completely? Not not quite. They, they just took away 22 more acres of the beach and building homes on there. We still got the largest beach in the area. So you guys are getting more and more pushed aside like Palestine. Absolutely. Your, your territory Absolutely. is becoming more and more encroached upon. A- Absolutely. So it's good to look at some pictures on Google Images of St. Joseph, <clears throat> Ben Harbor beaches, and, and you'll get an idea of what we're dealing with. It's a playground for the rich. It's a, it's a Upton family plantation. Absolutely. Yeah, and here's the thing, too, that people need to know. They, they built this Jack Nicholas golf course, and it now is surrounded by these $300,000 or more condominiums. They don't call them homes. Some of them are maybe 15 rooms. Some of them are, hmm. uh, maybe be as, as small as 12 rooms. But they're, they're not, they don't call them homes. They call them condominiums. They're all around the golf course. In 20 years, that's going to be turned over to St. Joseph, Michigan, hmm. which may even include our beach. So that's why I'm telling people now, that's why you have to fight now. You can't wait until they do it. You got to start fighting today. And that's why I've been fighting this battle so long. And now the, the emergency manager, if I understand correctly, even has the power to disincorporate Ben Harbor entirely if he wants to. Yeah. You know, I, I'm glad you said that, but here's the simple reason why. All the magazines stated that the Harbor Shores Project was in St. Joseph, Michigan. Uh-huh. And we fought for two years to get that reversed. They had to take the name St. Joe out of there and put Benton Harbor back in there. Hmm. In 20 years, the contract and agreement states that uh, the Harbor Shores, the hotel and everything, will convert over to St. Joseph, Michigan. Hmm. See, St. Joseph doesn't have any room to expand. Ben Harbor can expand, and that's why they want Ben Harbor. If you look at Google Maps and just type in Ben Harbor, it shows that all of that beachfront property is St. Joseph. It shows the only beachfront property of Ben Harbor being that uh, the Jean Clock Park, oh, and, then right. that, and then everything south of there being St. Joe. So I don't know if they've gotten someone has gotten in there and tried to just start rewriting history or. Well, that's what's confused me, because when I looked at the map, 
I just saw that the beach was St. Joseph because on Google Maps, it doesn't show Benton Harbor being on the water any longer. <laughs> but when you said you were actually on the water, that confused me because Google Maps doesn't show Benton Harbor on the water. Oh, we right that Jean Clark Park, that whole area. Matter of fact, it's, it was at one time, it probably was about, I don't know, four to five miles long. Hmm. Now it's, it's, it's about two miles, probably two, maybe even maybe less than that, because we lost 22 more acres just recently. And so, you know, they, they keep, you know, they keep slicing it up. Pretty soon it'll be maybe down to, I don't know, maybe a thousand feet. It, you know, it all depends. But anyway, the, the whole plan is to eliminate Benton Harbor from that area, period, because even now when you go to Gene Clark Park, you have to pay to get in there. You never had to pay to go to Gene Clark Park. But now the residents of Benton Harbor have to pay to enter Gene Clark Park. So is this the seashore community for the finance guys in Chicago? That too, they're part of it. It's really Whirlpool themselves. Okay. They're, they're, they're the ones who actually make it a playpen. Well, until we started researching this, I didn't understand how big Whirlpool Corporation was. I thought oh. that in my mind, and I think the minds of most activists, Whirlpool is just a small company that makes washers and dryers. Lay out how big Whirlpool actually is. The same family is connected to the energy company, it's Chesapeake Energy. This is a big ruling class family. This family, uh, when, you, when you speak of the, the Upton family, it, it runs deep because they also are oil barons too. Uh, is the McClendon family the? There's oh. another. It's a family, the oil baron family out of out of Texas. Uh, they're married into the Upton family. It's, there's an Aubrey and McClendon who's the cousin of Fred them. Upton. Right. That's Aubrey is the cousin, and the McClendons are the oil barons. Right. And uh, multiple billionaires. I was just going to uh, specify that he started a company called Chesapeake Energy, which is the second biggest natural gas producer in the U.S. after Exxon. And they are the pioneers of this fracking or, or uh, hydraulic fracturing where they do slant drilling to sort of, you know, bust up the, the rock beneath the earth and get natural gas to come out. So he, he's a very sort of controversial figure for that, but also even among billion. He was called by Forbes magazine. Uh, the world's most reckless billionaire because of yes. he's just uh, out of control with his risk tolerance. And, and, and here's the thing about, about, about that, that family. They're, they're so, see, they remember this. Fred Upton is the U.S. representative. And what he does, he compliments whatever they do and get people to vote. He's been, for the last 25 years, been a U.S. representative. So he, he do have political power. And uh, He's also the chairman of the Committee for Commerce and Energy, which is a big post. Yeah, absolutely. He, and he, and he, that he, would go with the Chesapeake Energy. And, absolutely. And with Whirlpool, because they oversee trade policy, they oversee all kinds of commerce and uh, investigation issues into things like um, antitrust violations and... So it's a it's an egregious conflict of interest for him. Absolutely, and, and remember this: the Whirlpool themselves, they they has a monopoly. See, they cannot control over fifty one percent of the washer and dryer, stove and refrigerators in the world. They own over sixty hmm. percent of all the washer, dryer, stove and refrigerators in the world, and basically they're breaking the law. But who's going to tell them that they're breaking the law? If we don't tell them they're breaking the law, they believe what they're doing is okay. That's when I come in. The last time I was at a meeting with him, I spoke about how you can have over 51% and nobody else can have over 51%. Well, now I have a silly question. I've, if they are the largest manufacturer of appliances, where are the jobs? They're all overseas. Here's what they did do. You, there's a, in Mexico, mm -hmm. they got a whole line of jobs there. But here, here's what happened in Mexico. They was, re, they was building the washer and dryer and stove and refrigerator in Mexico. And they started breaking down. And people started challenging them on that. So they squished some of them to Germany. 
Now, Germany, you have to pay the pay. Uh, their wages are higher than here in the United States. Right. So what they did, they had to leave Germany and go to one of these uh, uh, comp- one of these one, one of these third world co- countries who's now building parts for the washer and dryer and stove and refrigerator. They have. There's no manufacturing jobs here in Benton Harbor. Were there at one time Whirlpool manufacturing jobs in Benton Harbor? All of them was. Okay. Every last one of them was here, right here. That's a simple fact that I don't think any of us even knew. Right. Now, they, they, they at the home office, less than a half a percent of the people that work at Whirlpool are from the city of Benton Harbor. Less than a half a percent. I'm, I'm talking... Over 4,000 people work right here in Benton Harbor, and that's why, and don't live in Benton Harbor, that's why we was going to put a 1% income tax on them. And that's why we was going to recall the mayor here also, because he was for, he was against the income tax, even though over 95% of the people that work in Benton Harbor don't live here. There was a case uh, that was became kind of infamous where Whirlpool got a grant from the 2009 stimulus project, and it was to it was 19 million dollars, and they were supposed to develop smart appliances, and they used the money to close a refrigerator factory in Evansville, Indiana, which I think is up in the northeast, and moved all of that to Mexico, and the workers in Mexico are being paid 70 dollars a week. Yeah, which absolutely. Is, which is about and- two hours of a union guy's wage up here. Right, absolutely, and and, uh, and 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 that's what they did. Like I said, they see the German workers are good workers, and you got to pay the regular, the you know, the regular salary. So that didn't work out. So they moved to a they moved the uh, uh, the factory to a third world country, and once again, you, I don't even know whether they're making seventy dollars a week. Uh, the point is, they moved them all out of the city of Benton Harbor. And it's the world who started right here in Benton Harbor. They moved them out and it really caused a problem for the people. And they decided if, if no work, you're going to leave here. There was over 40,000 people here at one time. Now we got less than 10,000. People are leaving here left and right because there's no jobs for you. Let, let me say that over 60 percent of the people are unemployed. 90 hmm. percent live below the poverty level. So this is not just a civil rights case. This is emblematic of the economic dictatorship. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we're fighting for. We've got this billionaire family that uh, all have a conflict of interest. Like you said, one's an office protecting the business interests. We've got Chesapeake Energy mixed in with this. And then we have the mind-bending girl. (laughs) Most of the public will know. Most of the public's not going to know who Fred Upton is or the father who's lower on the totem pole of Kate Upton. But everybody's going to know Kate Upton. We would like to, as activists, launch an attack on Kate Upton. Right. And, and, and here, here's a good thing. Uh, uh, she's dating a pitcher on the uh, Detroit Tigers baseball team, Justin Verlander. Yes. She's the weak link. She's well, the, the weak whole link. Fa- the, the whole family is, is weird. But <laughs> the attack... If we start with her and see what kind of response we get, because I, I think they would they would be overprotected of her. And she is a public and, face that she wants to protect. Right. And, and I believe we should hit her heart right off the bat mm-hmm. and not be tender and, and then continue and continue to pound her. I, I think that I think that would be the best thing that we could think of. See, if we attack the weak link, they're all start coming out of the woodworks. Mm-hmm. Absolutely agree. I think it's a great strategy. So we're going to put on freepinkney.wordpress.com a list mm-hmm. of memes that Kyle is making and a list of tweets, and we are going to launch a Twitter attack. Maybe we should as well against the baseball playing boyfriend. That too. He, he didn't have a great season last year. <laughs> they're all they're all public figures. Here's, Absolutely. They're, they're complicit in this. You can't say you're not complicit just because you're. And, 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 and we we can also say that he's dating a, a girl with a fascist family. I don't think them baseball players. I don't think they'll think very kindly of him. And we can probably can get inside his head by attacking her and sending stuff to him. 
and not just fascist, but racist. You know, he's playing right. with that's a lot key. of African Americans. That's the key word. That's the key word: fascism and racism, a combination of both. Oh, you could put one of those on each one of her breasts. <laughs> <laughs> most people, unfortunately, in America, most of the kids who she's going to care about her reputation with, who are fans of hers, won't know what fasc- fascist is. But racist is going to get them right away. Right, absolutely. And then you can put on her stomach, her stomach, <laughs> the, the merging of uh, 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 government and the corporations. Because so there's plenty of room on her stomach that you, we can put that on. <laughs> Now, let's get back into Fred the or the Upton family in Whirlpool a little bit. From my research, he really seems to be one of, if not the main power broker in Michigan politics. He seems to kind of be the the senior advisor to Governor Snyder. They were, you know, college friends at the University of Michigan. He absolutely he seems to be running. I'm glad this you home. brought that up. That's a real good thing because everybody don't know that. Only Fred was a senior. When Snyder was a freshman, mm-hmm. Snyder allegedly is a lot smarter than Fred. Hmm. Robin Orr, the emergency manager in Detroit, they all went to school oh. with Fred Upton. Okay, so Kevin and Snyder are smart. Upton is a dummy. So and, that's the combination. And El Pasholka, who is the state rep in your area, was a staffer for Upton and considers him to be his mentor. He's the guy that introduced the emergency management bill. He actually didn't write it. He had people from Whirlpool who actually wrote it. Okay. He just presented it to the house. He's, he's a low lights. That's what he is. He uh, used to work for Cornerstone Alliance, which was a division of Whirlpool. Right. And from there... He ran uh, uh, for for rep when when um, who gave up that seat? Losada, judge. He's a judge now. Losada. He gave up that seat, and then Al uh took over that seat. Um, this whole network of people is also invested financially in the Cornerstone Alliance. You, you can even see this on their website. Pacholka, Judge or uh, Mayor Hightower, the whole Upton family. They're all in the list of investors who are benefiting financially from the Harbor Shores project from these tax-free enterprise zones, all this kind of stuff. Yes. Here's another thing, too, I think that we, we should attack. We should figure out how we're going to attack this Hightower character mm. along with her. I, I, I think the attack on him should be merciless. They were they trying to build him up to be something that he's not. And, they, and remember this, they have their own media core. And if we attack her, now he's up in board, too. It'll be like a double whammy. Mm-hmm. You see, and he's very vulnerable. Mayor James Hightower, how is he connected to the Uptons? He's their puppet. He's the tool that they use. Because uh, remember, the, the mayor here doesn't really have any power. Only thing he has is the ability to sign off on things, land. See, even though that uh, the emergency manager has the final say, they still need the mayor's signature. So that's where he fits in. So they had to have someone who they can control to sign some of these documents. And that's where he comes in. How did he get elected in the first place, or sort of where did he come from? I don't believe he got elected. I believe he got selected. Mm-hmm. Because I cannot believe that he he beat the, he had beaten the former mayor. Uh, he won by about five, six votes. Hmm. We were concerned about that. Because they can fix it for anybody to win they want. We knew that nobody really liked this guy. We couldn't figure out how he got it. It was only 800 something votes anyway. Oh. He won about four or five votes. And the other mayor didn't want to fight for it. You know, he, he just gave up. He, he couldn't go through uh, uh, them pounding him like they were. You see, mm-hmm. the, the news media is, is a monster. What they do to you, they try to discredit you on every level. And this guy, he was he was in his 70s and he, he just got tired of it. He's I. I I'm not going to fight for it. If, if they want to give it to him, they're going to give it to him, and I'll have to live with that. When you go to the U.S. government and you say there's miscarriage of justice, they will say they can't get involved if it's in the courts. But mm-hmm. outside of the country, we have a lot of activists. I think the OSCE is a, a key place to start. They can have an opinion, unlike the American government, if something is in the courts, and they can make a pronouncement that carries weight. People need to go to their OSCE. And Kyle, you're a bit of an expert on this. Do you want to talk about the Helsinki Final Act of 1975 and explain how we're going to go about this? It's kind of like a United Nations document. 
and the signatories are just any major country in the world from the US to Russia to China to whoever just sort of agreeing to basic norms of international relations but also basic norms of national politics and i think the one part that most interested webster is under section 8 equal rights and self determination of peoples and it just kind of talks about how all participating states have to re- respect the equal rights of people their right to self determination just sort of legal norms and and political norms and in the point here is that when the U.S. can be shown to be not respecting this in the same way that we are constantly poking the stick at China or at Russia, China or Russia now has a pretext to come poke the stick at us. Documents like this say, you know, okay, the United States, you're not respecting these international norms that you've signed on to. Now we sort of have the right to intervene in your internal affairs and, you know, make pronouncements, get in the media, so it's really it's a, another form of a pressure campaign that's also just going to going to sort of fan the flames and 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 build the uh build momentum for this case. And the Chinese have started to publish their own human rights report. The US used mm-hmm. to be the only one who published this report and they of course yes. included themselves, but now we have the Chinese who can look at America and publish something about this. So we're trying to get the Chinese to Include. Oh, okay, great. That, that that's that's tremendous. The first time in history the Chinese have. Yeah, and I, I was I was just about to say that that's almost unheard of. Mm-hmm. America was the only one who ever published a human rights report, and of course they pointed the finger at every other country, but never but them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we were isolated in that regard, and we're no longer isolated. I also am going to include on freepinkney.wordpress dot com talking points for going to your foreign embassy and the OSCE. It's too much to get into now. But I wrote up about five paragraphs of Mm -hmm. things that will arm you for when you go in. Better to go in in person first. And I also have a letter. We've translated it into several languages. You can walk in with a letter. You should also demand to speak to your foreign minister. So you just Mm -hmm. you look up your foreign embassy on the computer, say you're in Mexico and you go just type in Mexican foreign embassy. Then you'll find out who the foreign minister is and you find out the location and you walk in the building and say, I demand to speak to a foreign minister in the case of Reverend Edward Pinckney of Michigan, which represents a flagrant and outrageous violation of the international norms of human rights and civil rights, especially as these norms are codified in the Helsinki Final Act of 1975 and as superintended by the OSCE, the Organization of Security and Cooperation in Europe, et cetera. I will post uh, everything so you're armed with what to say when you walk into that office. That's going to be as part of the package of what you can do as an activist. Hey, I like it. I, li- I like it. I'm, I'm impressed with that. I think it's crucial mm-hmm. that we, we pound them from all angles and give them a taste of their own medicine more than anything else. I like I like I like what you're doing, Danielle. Thank you. And, and also, also, Kyle, the, this is coming from the United Front Against Austerity and the Tax Wall Street Party and the great activists around the world. They're not w- going to leave their foreign minister's office till they get something written in hand or speak to mm-hmm. the right person. Very good. Very good. Tremendous. This was effective in Detroit, was it not? And Reverend Pinckney, you spoke with the U.N., investigators there about the the water shutoffs being a human rights violation. Oh, ab- absolutely. And, and, and we remember it, it all the water issue started here in Benton Harbor. Mm-hmm. You see, and, and see, that's what people who, who around the country don't know unless they listen to Webster Tarkley when I, I explained to them the water issue started here. They was cutting people water, a whole block of people water off at one time. That's how they got the golf course. Uh, they was cutting people water off, condemning their home because without water, they condemn your home. Mm-hmm. And if you have children, they call a uh, uh, DHS, Department of Human Services, in, to take your children. <laughs> and it all started right here in Benton Harbor. But we fought back. When they cut the water off, we cut it. Out, well, we went out and cut it back on because we had a system that if we cut the water back on, they have water for a certain length of time. But we went out in the morning and cut it back off. So we made sure it was work. It was, it was almost like an all-night job. That you don't you don't get paid for, but you get satisfaction seeing these uh, children having water in their home. Uh, and in Detroit, 
they started cutting off thousands of people water at one time. Remember here, cutting off a, a, a one block of water here is like a thousand people water almost in, in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have as many people as they have. So, you know, you talk about maybe a uh, 100 people that they cut off uh, every day. They did, that was, it was like an all night job. We beat them down by doing what we needed to do. That got international attention. I forgot what it was called, the wa turning on the water. What was turn it? Turn the water back on. Turn, turn the, the water, water turn back. the water back on. Are they still there fighting for the water? Fight? Oh, absolutely. I, I was there on Monday. I, I spoke to, to a group of maybe four or 500 on Monday, telling them I don't want them to give up. Don't Good. see one thing when cold weather come, most people run for cover. Okay. You see, they, they're not out and active as like in the summertime, spring or the fall. And it was very, very cold on Monday night, but we had a good turnout. And I want people to understand that this, this, this fight is for real. I want them to know, like the people in Detroit, it's all about the future. You see, people don't understand that. Even my fight right here is about the future. It's really not all about Reverend Pinckney. They want you to think it's about Reverend Pinckney, but it's not. Free Pinckney is important, but it's about the future. So what we have to do, we have to tell people, because most people will say, well, it'll never happen in my hometown. I said the same thing. I said, I said they wouldn't be that riding to cut people water off with children in the house. They was glad to cut the water off. And then they spread it to Detroit, it's Flint, Michigan, Pontiac, Muskegon, all these places was going through the same thing. But we were, you know, we, we stopped them. They left the city of Benton Harbor alone. Did we get to the root of the problem, though? What we did was enough to get them off us mm -hmm. and to show them that we were willing to fight back. So they moved on to Detroit because that's who they was gunning for. They didn't really want little bitty Benton Harbor. They wanted Detroit. And they got Detroit by the neck right now because they got too many sellouts there. That's the biggest problem Detroit faces, sellouts. People know better because if you don't take care of your business today, you're going to be sorry tomorrow. And that's what's happening in Detroit today. And that's, that was my message on Monday. I tried to make it loud and clear so people could understand how important it is. You have to be willing to make the supreme sacrifice in order to get this thing right. And that's what we have to do. Can you be more specific about there being sellouts in Detroit? Well, the same thing that started here. The uh, people were taking money underneath the table. Okay. They, uh, uh, they cared less about the people. They cared less about their children, the future of their children. They only had one goal, to get a few dollars in their pocket. And here's the, here's the, the bar. I can only talk about what's happening and what happened in Benton Harbor. Mm -hmm. They weren't even giving these guys a lot of money. I mean, tokens like. And they was willing to give up land and sell out the future of their children for tokens. It really, it really pierced my heart because I couldn't believe that people would do people that bad. Yeah. So that's what, you know, that's when I said sell out, that's what I'm saying. They're receiving a few stipends underneath the table. See, if, if, if they stood tall, they couldn't do what they do. Even with the, they couldn't even bring an emergency manager. When we took control, that's when we received the emergency manager. We won the election. Once we won the election, they started talking about the emergency manager. And they did it under the Democratic government. So, you know, where do we go from there? We need to cover sending summaries to journalists, too. So we're going to write up a summary that mm -hmm. make it easy for a journalist to write an article and to contact you. Everybody who knows any journalists. I'm going on mainstream media on Saturday like a Fox News channel. Well, you know, if, if it's a Fox News channel, just blame the Democrats. Yeah. <laughs> right. See that's, see, that's real simple. Uh, if you blame the Democrats, you can get on all these stations. <laughs> For the activists, they need they need uh, an outline, which we're going to provide on. Right. Free and, 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 if you, and let, let me say this, Danielle, because my, my phone is open 24 hours. And that's for all activists in the World. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's no such thing as me sleeping. You know, <laughs> uh, I got one goal. That's goal. That that goal is to make sure we do the job 
that we do. See, the, the definition of an activist is a person who acts. Hmm. You can't be an activist if you don't act. So don't classify yourself as an activist if you're not doing it, if you're not acting. I, I have a, what they call an open, open door policy. People can come to my home, house any time of day or night, and they can call me any time of day or night. And I like every morning, uh, I'm up early, and they always, you know, someone calls me five o'clock in the morning every morning. Maybe not the same person. Someone calls me at three o'clock. I don't have a problem with that. If 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 I got a problem with it, I'm in the wrong business. You see? That's an extremely important point because we have until December fifteenth. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot. We don't have a lot of time. There's no time to sit around and collect information. No, now is the time for action, and action means you're going to go to freepinkney.wordpress.com and you're going to look at the section that says how to help. And we are going to make it as simple as possible, paint by numbers, but you are the ones who have to take action. It's not a sit and gather information time. That's this right. is a time of action, and we have until December 15th. So we need everybody to go to the post office, start writing letters, start contacting, scour your mind and think, what six degrees of separation am I from anybody? And don't hesitate to reach out, ask, contact all the local papers in your area. Contact a big paper. Why not take the guidelines and say, I demand answers. I demand answers to your embassy. I demand answers from your congressman. I demand answers everywhere you possibly can. Organize a small group of people in your area to each write a letter. And you be in charge of that letter writing initiative, whether you get in 10, 20 from your local area and make that your action. It's time that we all start in general thinking about action. This is a time of action. Yes. Absolutely. We've, and, gone, and, we've gone through a long period of information gathering for the last 30 years. And, and you know, what I always say, we, we, we talk so much. Mm -hmm. uh, we do all this talking, there's no action. Mm -hmm. and, and the key word, we have to figure out a way how to put all this talk into action. Always think that you're under time pressure. Mm -hmm. it's an, and don't think somebody else is going to do it. Right. Ever. So you're a lifelong activist, reverend, young activist, can fall into certain traps. Oh, oh, absolutely. Do you have any too, words too. of wisdom? Oh, absolutely. You know, see, let's make this struggle a victory for all. You see, of the economic crisis in every city, every town. Let's confront the corporations that are destroying this country. We have to confront people. They always say that the people run fast, but they don't run long. They say we're like quarter horses. We can only run a quarter of a mile. It's time that we change that mentality. We have to make sure people understand this is not a conflict. This is a war we're fighting. We're at war. They're fighting a war and we're not. Let's train our minds to get out there and do what needs to be done. Because we have too many people, too many people who's sitting back and, lock, and want other people to do what they should be doing. So let's stand together and fight this battle and tell the world that enough is enough. We must learn to fight back, fight back. That's what we must do. And we will win this struggle. The free painting is just a start. There's other people that need our help also. So let's start and showing these fascist people, the fascist government, that the people are willing to take a stand. And some people, like, like I took a bullet in my knee, but I didn't take a bullet in my heart because my heart is for the people and I'm willing to fight for the people, whatever need be done. And I'm counting on you, you young folks, to do this. Don't let me down. If you sacrifice for Reverend Pinckney now, he'll be here and his network will be there for you when you need them, whether you're running for office, when you need the help from local activist groups that you connect with by helping the Reverend. It's all interconnected. Absolutely. Just talking about a little bit about the nature of these fascists, for lack of a better word, they're organized, they're ruthless, and they're patient and persistent but ultimately they're not that smart you know whirlpool can't figure out how to keep jobs in america 
They can't mm-hmm. figure out a better way to produce energy than fracking. They, That's right. They can't do anything right other than rub, lie, steal, cheat. You know, we need to fight fire with fire and be as organized, as persistent, as dedicated as they are to their goal. Absolutely. And and, and one of the things, they get paid to do what they do. Yeah. You see, it don't take them 24 hours to feed their family. Mm-hmm. That's another weapon that they have. You see, it takes us 24 hours just to feed our family. While they're out making money, thinking about how they're going to crush us if we stand up to them, we have to realize once again, and listen, to this is important. We have to take the ball out of their ballpark and put it in our bar- ballpark and tell them that it's not about me. If we can get that in, through the heads of the, of the majority of the people, we'll win this battle. Most people want it to be about them, but it's not. It's not, it's not even about me. Even though it's out there free, Reverend Payne, it's not about me. It's about the future. And we have to prepare ourselves for the future by any means necessary. Unless they're going to eliminate all of us. Black, white, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Chinese, Japanese. It don't make a difference. We all got to be in this together. And we can win. We can win. But you have to want to win. They are in a war. I think about that. And I think about strategy. And I think about how they're loyal to each other and loyal to their class. We need to have that same level of dedication, loyalty, and Absolutely. strategy. You see, they, 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 they bribe people with money. They believe that everybody can be bought and sold. They believe that. I can't be. I don't live for money. I live for justice mm-hmm. for all. That's what I live for. That's what I fight for, justice for all. See, I, I'm, so, I'm, I'm such a competitor. I just believe that we can win. We can neutralize these corporations and this government just by standing together. And we can do it, Danielle, mm-hmm. Kyle. I know we can do it. Reverend, you've run for United States Congress before, haven't you? That is correct. Almost got 5,000 votes. Oh, wow. And I was in jail. I think even that's that's another point where what you're out there doing is not complaining and bullhorning. You are running recall petitions. You've got another guy lined up to be the mayor when you get the old mayor out. Absolutely. You've got the, the goal, the strategy, and the tactics, and you're not afraid to, to get into that political arena directly. And I think that people need to sort of take a lesson from that. You just don't go out here and do things without having a plan. Mm-hmm. You see... You- Everything got to be calculated because you 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 dealing with the devil himself. They they don't really care about the people that they use. When they get through using you, they make you get out of town. Here you got to leave the city. I'm happy that it's me rather than somebody else that have to go through this because someone else may not be able to handle it. You see, even the guy that they uh, arrested almost at the same time they arrested me, I'd rather for it to be me. Like I told him, I said, look, I don't know whether you could handle what's going on. And I wouldn't want you to go through this. Nobody should have to go through this if you're not prepared mentally, morally, and socially to handle it. I'm prepared. Webster's project that he's excited about is preparing a 16-hour course on how to get spiritually and morally and mentally prepared for battle, for Absolutely. for action, taping it for all activists to see. From Excellent. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Back to action. Quickly, we're coming from the point of view that the Reverend is not guilty. Absolutely. There is no evidence. Our thesis statement is, how can you convict somebody with no evidence? That's the place. Use the word word absolutely no evidence. That way it's it's more of a positive spin on it. How can you convict somebody with absolutely no evidence? Then we have the letter writing drive in effect. Gather as many people as you can in your area. Talk to them personally about the Reverend's case. Explain to them and ask them to write a letter to the judge. We're going to show you how to style that letter by giving a sample letter to Judge Sterling Chirac. It'll all be spelled freepinkney.wordpress.com. So the letter writing drive is in effect. We will have Kate Upton memes, lots of Kate Upton memes. If you are a meme maker, please contribute your own Kate Upton meme to the website. You can post it on our Facebook page at 
facebook.com slash against austerity, posted on facebook.com slash tax wall street party, facebook.com slash united front radio. Send your meme to united front radio at gmail.com. And we're going to put an article together to sort of put that in context that connects her to the Upton family and, and then explains this whole issue just so that you don't have to do that all in one little image, but you can give people a link with it. Uh, the most valuable player from the activist team will be the person who comes forward with a pro bono lawyer. Most important are donations. One more time with the donation link, please, Reverend. It's bhbanco.org, B-H-B-A-N-C-O dot org. B-H-B-A-N-C-O dot org. And please make the most generous donation that you possibly can. That would just, that would go a long way, everybody, please. And if you've done that in the past, thank you so much. You know you're in our hearts. We have on this list talking points for foreign embassies so you are armed. We need you to stay at that foreign embassy till you make contact. Letter to hand to the foreign ambassador or the OSCE. That will be there. And then we'll have a summary for you to send to journalists. Can we think of anything else? Uh, and don't forget about the tweet attack. Right. Yeah. Mass action on Twitter and Facebook and other social media to go after Kate Upton, maybe her boyfriend, the baseball player. Mm -hmm. We'll have some memes about him, too. Right. What makes her cry to daddy. <laughs> yeah. And, and also make him cry, too. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said to me, why are you going after Kate Upton? She's not involved in this. Ignorance is no excuse. You are That's complicit right. if you are ignorant. You are complicit if you are silent. You are complicit. And mm. she she wouldn't be where she is as a public figure if the Upton family had not basically disemployed 40,000 African-American people and shipped their jobs to Mexico. So she, Absolutely. she can thank, her, thank that for her career. Hey, I agree 100%. We will have all this information centralized in the next 24 to 48 hours at freepinkney.wordpress.com. Send any questions. Call, call the reverend. Send any questions directly to us at United Front Radio at Gmail. Nothing, like the reverend has said before, is too silly, too small. Any question you have, send it to us. And any activism you're doing, let us know, because we can also and, help and you. One other thing, December the 15th is a citizen day. Those who can come, please be there. And maybe I'll uh, be able to meet up with Danielle and we can drive out there. I'm, I'm working on a few things. Okay. Um, I'm working on people to come and uh, and finding places for people that, that's going to stay. We, we did, I had about eight locations uh, uh, filled up for, for the summer, but I'm going to get more. I'm going to get, you know, uh, other people where they want to stay that we can get them in, in a nice, comfortable position. If you're planning on coming, start contacting us now so we can make it count. How, what are we going to do when we're there, Reverend? Protest at the trial? Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to definitely protest uh, the day of the hearing, and we, and, and we want people to make signs and bring your signs, and we're going to make sure that we uh, uh, let them know that we're here. See, that's the most important thing. And the more, the merrier. We, you know, we get enough people here and make a big wreck wreckage, we'll be prepared to do just about anything. So that, that, that's what it's all about. Nope. Show the power. We're not going to let this get through, Reverend. No, absolutely not. Thank you. I, I, I really, really enjoy communicating with you. You and Kyle, you know, you, you just fit in. Uh, even before this happened, you two fits into what we're trying to do here. And I really appreciate you both. Thank you very much, Reverend. Same. This is the beginning of taking back the country from austerity dictatorship. Absolutely. Daniela, maybe instead of you signing off tonight, we could get Reverend Pinkney to sign off with a, a Bible verse that might be fitting to the occasion. I, I, I got one for you, my favorite one. Deuteronomy 28, start with the 15th verse. If you do not hearken unto the voice of Lord thy God and do all the things that is right, all these things will come upon you. In Jesus' name, good night all. Good night. Good night. <laughs>